Hmm, I wonder what you call it if you take one zero away. Duo Trigantillion? Is that even a word? Didn't think so. Today in Ancient DOS games, we're taking a look at the Google Math Games, not to be confused with the intentionally misspelled search engine many of us use. And this is actually a collection of three games in one, Google Climber, Google Peed, and Google Vaders. And while they are centered around solving math problems, all three of these games have a sort of arcade quality to them, so there's much more of a focus on gameplay than there is on actual mathematics. Whether that's a good thing or not is debatable, but considering that most math software is made by large and small companies, the fact that this one is an indie title is impressive in its own right. At least to a point, and we'll get into that, but first, let's take a look at the game stats. The Google Math Games were created and released by Paul T. Dawson in 1989, though he made frequent updates to the game system, with version 3.6, the last update he released, being in 1993. All three of the games included can be roughly approximated as one-player arcade games, though there is a special feature you can activate so that every time a game is finished, the player rename screen will pop up, allowing multiple players to more easily take turns. It originally only supported CGA 320x200 four-color graphics and PC speaker sound, though later versions, while still using only four colors, could take advantage of the larger 16-color palette offered by EGA cards, and thus you could change the colors however you wanted to. As for its current release date, this is another one of those games like Flightmare that thinks it's shareware when in fact it's actually freeware. You see, the game itself is the full game and actually encourages you to copy and share it with other people. Registering doesn't change the Google Math games in any way, but rather it lets you choose a bonus disk that wasn't shareware to add to your game library. Or you could do what the author called a super registration and get all of the software he offered for one price. However, to quote DOS Guy, the person who runs the RGB Classic Games website, Paul Dawson seems to have disappeared off the face of the earth. So don't expect to find any of his registered games anytime soon. Which is a shame, really, because one of the discs he offered was called the Google Bonus Disc, and one of the elementary schools I attended had this bonus disc. It contained six more games, four of which were math-based, all of which were fun, and it really sucks that I wasn't able to find a way to get a copy before doing this review. But, oh well. If you want to get a copy of the Google Math Games, just head on over to the RGB Classic Games website at www.classicdosgames.com. And yes, that domain name is finally working again. So let's take a look at each of these games in order, starting with Google Climber. This is kind of a platforming game where you're given an equation and have to choose the correct answer, but you choose the answer by hopping around this board, scaling up to the higher levels and dodging rolling balls along the way. And this is by far the weakest of the three games on offer here, primarily because it doesn't control very well. The little pixel person you play as has this issue where he can't stop jumping to the left or right, which means there's a lot of luck and almost no skill involved in successfully jumping over the balls. Mind you, you don't really have to, because you can just cross the left or right boundaries of the playfield and appear on the opposite side, which is the best way to dodge the balls, but the main difficulty you're going to run into is scaling these platforms in the first place, because the openings are really tiny, and if you bang your head on just a single pixel of the edge, you lose a life. Lose three lives and the game is over. Yeah, even when I was in elementary school, this particular game was definitely the least played because it was slow and frustrating. Mind you, once you've lost all of your lives, a match screen shows up, much like on a pinball table, and if you can stop the spinning number and match the match number, you get one more life. And yes, if you lose that life, you get another match chance. 
And I think if the game at least offered the ability to stop a jump in progress, or just stop moving in general, it would have been much more fun. But as it stands, the gameplay component is just way too difficult at higher speeds, way too slow at lower speeds, and it just never strikes a good balance. The next game, Google Peed, is definitely the best of the three games on display, as it's essentially like Nibbles or Tron Light Cycles, where you move your Google Peed around trying to eat stuff to get bigger, and the bigger you are, the more points you get. The math component of this game is nothing more than true or false, as you're given a complete equation and have to eat the appropriate letter to indicate a true or false answer. Get it wrong, run into the walls, or run into yourself, and it's game over. You need to be a little careful too, since the equation given is sometimes true, but only if you change the operator, and since at higher speeds you tend to only look at the numbers and not the symbols between them, yeah, if that was a plus sign there, that so totally would have been true. You need to be on your A-game the entire time if you want to get the best Google Peed scores possible, which makes this particular game legitimately fun despite its educational component. Lastly, we have Google Vaders. Now, this one's sort of in the middle of the other two games in terms of quality. Essentially, equations are assaulting you from the top of the screen and you have to shoot them down by firing the correct missing number at them. Get it wrong and you simply lose some points. This game essentially comes down to speed math, meaning you need to answer these things really fast if you want to survive. But since you have 14 keys to worry about, 12 to shoot numbers in the left and right arrow keys, it can be pretty tricky surviving up to the final onslaught. However, I have a couple complaints about this game. Firstly, the robots. Now, as you probably noticed by now, every so often this robot of sorts appears on screen, interrupting the gameplay to give the player some sort of positive reinforcement. They're kind of annoying and you can indeed turn them off, but having them appear in Google Vaders can really help you out because while they're on screen, you can queue up your keyboard commands. That way, when they disappear, you could end up rapidly shooting down a bunch of equations. And this even works in Google Peen and is essential for surviving it at the higher speeds. The problem is that one of the robots, the one that shows a giant word in the middle of the screen then clears it away with a vehicle, clears the keyboard buffer as well, meaning every key you've queued up is forgotten. While this can be annoying in Google Peed, there's always a split second before you start moving where you can at least get your keys quickly queued up again. There's no delay in Google Vaders though, and the moment the message clears away, more equations will be on the offensive, meaning your success in Google Vaders can actually come down to how many times that particular robot comes on screen. The second problem I have with Google Vaders, though, has to do with the explanation system. And anytime you're faced with an equation you can't answer, you can hit the X key on the keyboard to get an explanation of the problem and a visual demonstration of the solution. All well and good, except that my very first professional programming job was making math software. And one thing I can tell you right now is you never start an explanation by giving someone the answer, which is unfortunately what happens with Google Vaders since you're trying to solve for the middle term and not the final term, but the explanation system is only designed to solve for the final term. So rather than having an entirely different explanation system that can solve for the middle term, it just tells you what the full equation is and solves for the final term, completely leaving any child in the dark as to how to solve for the middle term. Very lame. Now, yeah, well, even though the explanation system in the Google Math games is not very well done, at least the rest of everything is passable at worst and awesome at best which actually makes this one of the best edutainment titles ever made. And as an independent title that only costs money if you wanted more games made by the same author, that's pretty impressive. I've always wanted to make some math-based games myself for people to play, but again, as a result of my first professional programming job and witnessing firsthand the extreme amount of effort it takes to get schools to buy this software in the first place, combined with my lousy marketing skills, yeah, I can't see that working out very well for me. I think I'm just going to stick to making 2D shooters. DOSBox settings are really simple, though it took a bit of gameplay to nail down the best cycle setting. Now don't get me wrong, the game does have proper timing in place for the most part, but the highest speed settings simply unlock the timer, which means the gameplay will go stupid fast even on something as slow as an old 386. I found 550 to be the best cycles value to choose, so that the highest speeds possible for Google Climber and Google Peed would link up well with their next lowest speeds. Not to mention, if you set cycles too high, some of the sound effects just don't play back properly. Anywho, that's all for today's episode of Ancient DOS Games. Well, so far for Edutainment Month, we've seen a couple decent games, but for episode 83, we're going to take a look at one of those Activity Center games that came pre-packaged with many store-bought computers. 
Now, I happen to have four of these, and I haven't looked at any of them in ages. So rather than choose one myself, I'm going to let you guys choose which one I look at. And basically what it's going to come down to is if you want to see a game covering the human body, baby animals, marine animals, or dinosaurs. Since it takes time to make an episode, the cutoff date for voting will be the end of Monday, so make sure to send in your vote before then to ADG at Pixelships.com, keeping in mind I probably won't reply to any of them, and then tune in next Saturday to see which of these edutainment titles gets reviewed.